the Book of Ether, may very well be describing a realistic situation. Fascinating, isn't it? Now, John Sorensen's an ancient American setting for the Book of Mormon. He has on page, uh, let's see, what is this? 286, 287, 288, these different pages. I've got, my, I've got my other clear glasses on so that you can see my eyes. I've had people ask me to not wear my sunglasses. And the lenses in these aren't as good as the ones in my sunglasses, so you'll have to forgive me while I look through this. Oh, this is interesting. In fact, I think I'll take my glasses off. I can read it even better this way. Nibley showed that steel is in the Old World text. This is on page 286 of Sorensen's text. But he says, a recent, a recent expert's uh, article, a technical article, entitled, Steel and Antiquity, a Problem in Terminology, in Mexico we face similar obscurity. The native chron chronicler Tezazamak, he reported that the Tarascans, this is, Meso, this is Mesoamerica's most noted metallurgists at the time of the Spanish conquest, he says that they wore steel helmets. Now, we know so little about either our Nephite text or the materials and processes that were used in pre-Hispanic Mesoamerica that this makes it really interesting here. In a recent dispute about the use of tin, Mully and Wertime emphasized that documents that refer to the unexpected use of a metal are more persuasive as positive evidence than the failure of archaeologists to come up with the specimens as acceptable as negative evidence. The written text, according to the scholars here, is every bit as much evidence as actually finding the metal axe in the ground. That's fascinating. See, this is not LDS scholars desperately seeking any kind of evidence at all we can. We are using the actual scholars and archaeologists. I know I've said that before, but I'm going to say it again. We have to come to grips with this, guys and gals. We have to understand we're not kidding. Neither are the scholars. There's more evidence to archaeology than just what we find in the ground. The written texts are also evidence. And these two guys, they say it's more persuasive evidence as positive evidence. Specimens of metal were at all times were there all, oh, oh, this is too good to lose. Hold on. The, the scholars that Sorensen is using here, Cayley and Easby, they make the identical argument regarding pre-Columbian tin in Mexico. Here's what they say. After demonstrating that specimens of tin were there all the time in Mexico now, despite the doubts of archaeologists, they had failed to examine the evidence they end by observing, the results also show that it is not prudent always to discount or ignore historical accounts as possible sources of technical information. The archaeologists weren't looking for it, and therefore it wasn't found. But it is in the historical record. You see, this assumption that archaeologists are completely objective, uh, everything they find automatically proves things. We know all about it the minute it's excavated or discovered. Well, that's not true at all. The reason archaeologists haven't found smelting sites in Mesoamerica is because they haven't been looking for them. They assumed it didn't occur. So why bother looking for it? And yet now they're finding smelting evidence. That's fascinating. That has got to say, hold on, <laughs> time out, what else aren't you looking for and not finding? You see, if you assume at the outset that there was no metalworking, you're not going to find it. Duh. That's what the archaeologists have been doing. And their fellow archaeologists are chiding them for it. So, 
On page 287 now, Sorensen says, Perhaps the Jaredite historian who talked of steel in Ether 7-9 and Tazazamok with his steel helmets on the Taraskans both knew something that archaeologists will yet document. See, we have seen that metals mentioned in the Book of Mormon can, for the most part, be accounted for in Mesoamerica. So far as there is a significant problem, it concerns dating, but even that's been changing. A related line is comparison of, of metals in, uh, in the names, the words, and, and we've talked about that. And he goes through a lot, of, uh, a lot of technical information for lead and gold and silver and so on and so forth. Different words meaning different metals. One word meaning several different metals, so on and so forth. Well, where are we left at with the data of metal? He says, first, both in the Book of Mormon and in what we know from Mesoamerica... Metals were used more for decorative, ceremonial, and precious ends than for utility. In neither the scriptural account nor in the secular record do we discover good reasons why metals were not more fully employed, or why we fail to find more evidence, or if there even was more evidence. A bit of light is shed on why the Nephites considered some ores precious, but the questions remain both for students of the Book of Mormon and for scholars of Mesoamerica. These are vast. We are not done yet. But we have some good indications showing that there isn't as big a problem for the Book of Mormon as our critics are pretending. Some of it is the bias of the archaeologists. Boy, there's a new twist, huh? <laughs> wow. Here we thought they were being objective all this time. That's not true. Their fellow archaeologists are arguing against them. And finally, this final source. Oh, and he it's about John Sorensen discussing Deanne Matheny's critique of his text, an ancient American setting for the Book of Mormon. And he notes on page this is in the uh, Farms Review of Books, or Review of Books on the Book of Mormon, Volume Six, Number One, Nineteen Ninety Four. Uh, pages 318, 319, 320, 321, where he's discussing Matheny ignoring the linguistic evidence for metals in the Book of Mormon. And he says, oh, I've got to, hold on, i to take my glasses off again. More traces of ancient metallurgy will be found in Mesoamerica. As the names witness, some metal obviously was in early use. Now, this is interesting. He says in the footnote, uh, footnote 47 on page 321, he says, the scholar Ross Hassig relies on linguistic evidence. Here's what Hassig says. The Maya word for sling goes back as far as 1000 B.C. To counter the lack of archaeological evidence for that weapon in the Maya area, he has another study, War and Society in Ancient America. He says the linguistic evidence for sling dates back to 1000 B.C., but we haven't found any slings yet. That is not proof, because we don't have the physical sling anciently. That doesn't prove it wasn't there. That just proves we don't have it. Because we have it in the documents, and that is good evidence. Well, we have metal in the document, the Book of Mormon. That's good evidence. Now, with the new analysis that Nibley has talked about on Steele, and Sorensen, and Dan Peterson has noted, there are now tons of iron ore being discovered. We know the Spaniards took out hundreds of tons of of gold and silver and lead and copper that were produced that in that much quantity annually every year.